Hello and welcome back to Read Becca. This is my weekly catch up on everything I read, everything I'm currently reading, and everything I'm looking forward to reading. So I read just a couple of things. Um, I've been focused on reading that I can't really talk about. So let's start with the stuff I can talk about. And first, I picked up the number one Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander Nicole Smith. I was looking for an audiobook and started to pick up a mystery thriller that was not on my radar at all and then realized I need to look at what's on my shelves first. So I grabbed the audio of this and I really enjoyed it. I would say specific to the audio, the narrator has a very strong British accent um, for anything except for the dialogue. And I would say it was great narration. Um, the uh, African accents that the narrator does for the dialogue are really well done, I think. Um, but that was just a little jarring to be reading from that perspective. Um, there are things in this book about, you know, religion and, and stuff like that, that with that combined with the narration, having that element really made me think a lot about the colonization fact of this. Um, so why I'm thinking of that is that this is set in Africa, in Botswana, and we have our character Ma, Ma Rimotswe, uh, who is starting the first ladies detective agency in Botswana, and that's why it's number one. And she's such a character. She's so wonderful. She's a fat woman who isn't really ashamed of that, and um, she's savvy and really uses her knowledge of people and her her knowledge of character of people really is is what it is. So she has this understanding and, and way of talking to people that is so fantastic. And she starts this agency and initially is really trepidatious about its success because people are not coming in to help, get help. And she has a couple of, of successes with, with cases and they're, they're small cases, but she, she manages to work through all of the challenges that she faces through these cases. And that's, that's what's so good about this, I think. But I think what didn't work for me in this is that we get one case and then it takes a step back and gives her backstory and complete backstory from childhood growing up to her creating this agency. And so that felt really disjointed to me. I think had that been peppered through, it would have been a lot more natural because that first case I was completely gripped and, and pulled into this story. And then we completely shift, shift away from it. But once we finished the backstory and got back into cases again, I was totally hooked. So this was a great one for that. I think the the writing is really evocative in this. And I will read you just a little mundane part at the end. Um, I don't think this is a, a spoiler for anything really. It's just descriptive writing. He followed her inside. She poured him a beer and they went together to her favorite place to sit, sit on the veranda near the book of Via. Not far away, in a neighboring house, music was being played, the insistent traditional rhythms of township music. The sun went, and it was dark. He sat beside her in the comfortable darkness, and they listened contentedly to the sounds of Africa settling down for the night. A dog barked somewhere, a car engine raced, and then died away. There was a touch of wind, warm, dusty wind, redolent of thorn trees. He looked at her in the darkness, at this woman who was everything to him. Mother, Africa, wisdom, understanding. Good things to eat, pumpkins, chicken, the smell of sweet cattle breath, the white sky across the endless, endless bush, and the giraffe that cried, giving its tears for women to daub on their baskets. Oh, Botswana, my country, my place. So this has that, that really descriptive writing that just completely sucks you into the setting. So I, I enjoy this a lot. Um, I definitely think I will hang on to this and possibly reread it in print, uh, as well as I want to continue on with the series for sure. So um, in terms of the structure of this, you will easily, easily carry on with this because it has this almost vignette style where you're getting mystery after mystery after mystery. It's not just one large mystery, but then about the midpoint, you get a, a single mystery that carries on through the second half. So, so you are getting a layered effect between these multiple mysteries. So I just, I just enjoyed it so much. So that one was great. Then I picked up Spy X Family because my library finally got this series in. And uh, this is the, the first volume by Tatsuyo Endo. Um, I've heard Rhea from the Book Finch raving about this one and I think Shannon from That's So Poe as well. So this was one I really wanted to pick up. And it is, it's so funny and great. This follows a man who is a spy. His code name is Twilight. And he, he has a mission that he has to do, but he has to recruit 
a wife and child. And so this is him spitting his coffee when he finds out he has to recruit the wife and child. And it is so funny because he recruits a child who is a telepath and a wife who is an assassin, but he doesn't know that. So they're each these really big characters and they have reasons for kind of wanting to be in this situation. Each of them do. Um, the little girl, it's so hilarious. He goes to an orphanage and they kind of just give him a child. <laughs> it's very funny. But yeah, so this super entertaining. I have a couple other volumes to get to, but this, this is great, great fun. So that was my light reading for the week. Um, otherwise, I can't really talk about these, but um, I finished one of my booktube prize readings uh, three o'clock in the morning and I'm midway through. There's no such thing as an easy job. So those are good progress. This is one of my chunky ones. So I am working through my booktube prize stuff and I also got the two that I had ordered. Um, I had to purchase these. They didn't have them at my library. So we've got My Heart by Smezidin Memedinovic um, and translated from Bosnian by Celia Hawksworth. And then we've also got An Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector and translated by uh, Stefan Tobler. So those are my two. And oddly, I got these used, but they are both in perfect condition. Um, they The spines are still stiff. I think this one has like a little bit of a printing error. And it said this was like good condition versus very good or excellent. And yeah, it is completely new. So, so great. I'm, I'm very happy. I got these really, really cheap because they were, they said they were used, but, uh, so those are going to be my upcoming reading for booktube prize. I have a three day weekend this weekend. So I am thinking that I may actually be able to finish all of those within the next week because the, the two that I purchased are, are quite short. And if I can get to that point of having four finished by the end of the week, that's that's really good because I only have two left and it's about 600 pages to get done in March, which will mean I have a normal TBR for March, I think. So we'll see how I do on my reading this week, but you may actually get a, a good TBR for March. Um, yeah, so I think that's it in terms of reading because I did not get back to The Fall of Babel at all. I did not get back to Boys, Beasts, and Men at all. Uh, so those I have not picked up this week. I do plan to pick them up a little bit this weekend, but the booktube prize books are going to be my focus for sure. So um, I think that's it for books. Um, I can't believe I'm going to talk about this because this is super boring, but everybody on booktube seems to really like planner related stuff. So I'm going to talk about the fact that I got a planner. <laughs> so um, I got just a very nice little rifle paper company planner. This is a weekly and monthly planner. So those are pretty standard, I think. And I had last year tried doing this thing with just a regular calendar, a wall calendar, and was tracking all of the books, movies, and shows that I finished on the wall calendar, just so I could get a like a visual of how much stuff I was doing and keeping track of, of my, my progress there. And I did it really well for a couple months, but I let it slide. And I think most of that was that I had it on the wall in my bedroom and I'm not in there a ton and I just would forget to, to add stuff there. So I think having a small planner that I can have next to me at my desk while I'm working, I can kind of futz with it more. So I'm trying to combine what I was doing previously with also doing some tracking for the channel here. So my videos and stuff. So what I'm doing is I've got the month layout. So in the month layout, I'm tracking videos that I either had scheduled or um, have already gone out. And I'm also tracking finished things. So so book finishes, shows or movies that I finished. Um, and then the notes along the side, I'm tracking video ideas that I want to complete. So those are all there. And then in the weekly layout, I've got a, second, a section for each day. And I'm tracking on this side, I'm tracking any books, shows or movies that I interact with that day, whether I finish them or not. And then I'm just logging food on the other side. And I've got a section because there's eight, I've got a section for notes. So I'm keeping track of stuff that I have watched over the week that might fit in as recommendations for this, this weekly video. So I think that's going to work out really well. And like I said, I think it's going to be much more impactful having it sitting there on my desk where I can mess with it throughout the week a lot or throughout the day even. Um, versus having something on my wall that I was really forgetting about all the time. So I'm, I'm really happy with this, but it's only been a few days a week at this point. So I have no idea if I'll be able to keep it up. So I think that's all for 
on my bookie stuff and in life stuff, we had yet another crazy storm. So it was 60, I think on Wednesday and pouring rain and then overnight got completely freezing. We got freezing rain uh, a little bit, mainly sleet though, and then a little bit of snow. This was not like the previous time where we got a ton of snow on top. So we got a dusting of snow on top, but that may meant I was basically snowed in for a day and a half because of the ice. The ice was pretty severe and it was nice to see that everything kind of shut down. I saw businesses closing. So, so they all played it very safe, which is great. I feel like that has become a lot more socially acceptable than it used to be. You used to see, especially grocery stores would try to stay open completely for their normal hours through this kind of thing. And I don't think that is what's happening anymore. So, so that's very positive to me. Um, but it looks like we're going to get the exact same thing next week again. So basically three times in a row, we're having a swing of it's supposed to be 60, 65, even Monday and Tuesday and rainy. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we are meant to get possibly a transition into ice and sleet and then snow. So it's, it's sounding the very latest that we might have a little break in between the rain and the snow. Uh, so we might not get as bad of ice, but it has been, it's been pretty rough with the amount of ice that we've got. I have not experienced that here before. Um, we've had freezing rain once in a while, but, but this has been every single storm we've had this year has been like this and it just really shuts things down. Normally I'm in the Midwest. We deal with snow pretty well, unless it's absolutely like coming down like mad, they can usually keep up with it. But with this, it's just been completely difficult to keep roads open, uh, to stay on top of it because it's just, just ice. So hopefully, hopefully we will not have that again. Um, at the shelter, I haven't been able to go get supplies when this is closed. So I'm having to make sure I plan ahead for that. Um, they've been having people stay the night in the shelter to take care of the dogs and cats and stuff. So yeah. Um, but everything is, is all fine for that. I, I don't mind planning ahead, but as far as that, I, I am, very well prepared because I have a three day weekend this, this weekend. So Monday, my Monday is free. So I can just take off and, and go, go up to the shelter and, and pick up whatever I need on Monday if, if I do need to do that. So yeah. So my three day weekend is hopefully going to be spent with a lot of reading. And as I said, it's supposed to be rainy, which is my ideal reading conditions. Um, Cinnamon doesn't like to go for lots of walks in that sort of weather. So, so that will definitely help out. I don't think there's been really anything else this week. My door was definitely, definitely great. I talked about my sliding glass door that I got replaced uh, last week. And we had with this storm, I was able to verify that yes, it is super, super wonderful to not have ice in my room. Uh, and I got the inspection done a couple days ago. So everything is, is great with that. So we did have a panic with the pets because having, having strangers in the house is always chaos with them, but, but they did really well. So yeah, I think that is it for my week for my recommendations this week, going to the old planner now. Um, I had number one, Criminali did a great, great video that I enjoyed so much about comparing um, gendered expression in both pulp and romance. And it was such a, a unique take on, on that and how how men and women's roles are, are expressed there. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that video. So I will link that one down below. Uh, we had Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot doing something almost adjacent to that, interestingly, where he challenged his preconceptions about a couple of genres, including romance. So he had kind of romance and fantasy, a couple of different genres of fantasy. Uh, so I don't know how representative it was of doing like three books across how vast fantasy is, but it was a very, very fun concept. Then I have Kalinati. Uh, did a crafty catch up on all of her knitting and crochet projects, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I love her crafty videos. Um, she does, she's a very avid knitter and just recently started spinning her own yarn. Uh, so this one is specific. I'm pointing you to because she made chickens. <laughs> and so that's the first part of the video. If you're not interested in any of the rest of, of the random knitting projects, just go check out the chickens because goth chicken is well worth seeing. <laughs> so that was delightful. Um, and then the last one is an article. So Time uh, Online had a article about how Chinese fiction um, engages with topics of, of politics without getting them in trouble. And 
that was a, a very interesting topic and especially in the speculative fiction arena um it talked about how they use sci-fi and magical realism to engage with these topics that are otherwise not okay for them to talk about um so yeah i really found that a very very interesting article so i think that is it for my recommendations so i hope everybody's having a good week i hope you're staying safe and hopefully warm wherever you are i know people everywhere are having these kind of chaos situations with their weather i think we have big storms hitting the east coast as well um kind of unusually so yeah, I hope, hope you are warm and well. Thank you so much for watching. So I have been working on this. Uh, it's a shawl, the Dreamcatcher shawl, for months. <laughs> um, and I've almost solely been working on it during the Stitch and Bitch live streams that are put on by Kalinati, uh, Bookish Die, Brie Reads Books, and Rhea from the Book Finch. So that's why it's been slow going, because that has only happened once a month at most. Um, but, but I finally reached the end of the first skein of yarn. <laughs> I think I probably need a whole nother skein of yarn to complete this, but that's good progress. And I'm going to have to get in gear because I want this to be a gift at the end of March. So I'm going to have to basically take what took me about six months and replicate that within another one month. So we're going to be doing lots of audio booking and, oh, hi, Rue. <laughs> Are you helping me here? Audio booking and uh, crochet. Yeah, so helpful. I got a new chair, put it together. And now it's being very carefully inspected by two, two individuals. So helpful, you guys. It's extremely windy, but you can see the cats are obsessed with the new window because <laughs> I got a casement window. So it's the kind that is uh, one whole pane that opens out. <laughs> they think it's the coolest thing ever. They can see everything out there. I'm going to just say this is not okay. There. And then there. Yuck. So it rained all night, and now it is just epically sleeting. Like, crazy. Big temperature drop. Super icy. And now everything is frozen. That is solid ice. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun day. And now we've reached evening and there's a good little bit of snow here. <laughs> yeah, right on top of all the ice. Yep, is that fun, Cinnamon? Cinnamon is so good at making himself cozy. He's recuperating from a terrible trip out into the ice and snow.